Great relationships don't just happen. They're designed. Why leave love to chance when you can make strategic decisions in your relationship just like you do in your career? The days of having to settle for mediocre are over. Welcome to Project Relationship. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. Join me as I explore the decisions and choices that make relationships work no matter what life throws your way. It's time to reimagine relationships from the ground up. Let's go. Hi, and welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton, research psychologist, certified sexuality educator, and someone who likes to talk about just about anything, no matter how uncomfortable it might get. Um, And I'm here today for episode two of season one of the Project Relationship Podcast, and I have with me Ken Hamilton. Say hi, Ken. (laughs) And we're going to talk, we're talking all this season about how relationships are impacted by the holidays. And when I say the holidays, I mean that in in whatever sense you celebrate them, but when you get into those compacted, there's a lot of holiday energy going on and the whole society around you is experiencing um, that that ramped up energy. And now we're doing it in a pandemic too. That's the stuff we're talking about. And today we're going to specifically talk about empowered relating or what I have called empowered relating. Um, and I think that, yeah, Ken, I think that this is a good time for you to talk about what it's like to live with somebody who is a, uh, you know, I don't know, an expert, I guess. I don't like that word very much. An expert in relationships who still screws things up plenty. Well, <laughs> so let's talk about the holidays. Tell me what it's like to live with me in the holidays. <laughs> absolutely. I mean, we're all people and we all have our childhood experiences of the holidays and then adult experiences of the holidays. And they all, they all inform how we act. I mean, all of us. And so I have had, um, I have my own issues around the holidays, my own issues around just being a person in general. So the week before Christmas, there I am going to set up the outdoor light decorations, which I like so much, but hardly ever Because the week before is the right time. Because they're, yeah. See, this goes totally smoothly for us every time. I like them so much and hardly ever make them happen. But there I am. Yeah. The week before, because that's going to work great because there's nothing else to do that week. Uh, and uh, I go and get them. I pull them out and they don't work. And now I'm frustrated. And so I'm frustrated. He's like a little scene from the Christmas story. Totally. Entirely. Um, The blue streak hanging over the sky. But um, then along comes Jolie uh, in, in our household experiencing there's me blathering frustration all over the place. And her response is to get angry at me for being frustrated. So there I am. It's true. And and she gets angry at me because she doesn't want to have that energy in the house for the holidays. Except it's not just because I don't want the angry energy. Oh, good grief. It's because of... <laughs> it's so much more embarrassing than that. Well, yeah. I, or twofold, at least. It's not so much that she doesn't want the angry energy as she's looking for... It, it gives her something to fight about because her background my child your story but yeah it my parents had trouble around the holidays and um, my mom in particular had a lot of feelings um at the holidays uh, about wanting them to be a certain way but never really quite pulling that off and having some seasonal affective disorder stuff going on and just feeling low but mostly it just coming out in this loggerheads this anger this fighting so fighting at the holidays for me kind of feels festive it's traditional oh it's yeah exactly it's traditional we seek out those repetitive patterns so there i go i i both i'm i do i get i get i've gotten angry at you because you're frustrated but also i'm kind of getting what i want that's right which is not cool you're getting the feel the familiar feeling of a fight in amongst that time. Yeah, like and the way wrapped in the Christmas lights. <laughs> wrapped in the Christmas lights. And, <laughs> and then with yep. the electricity flowing yep. and just wishing it were 220. No, <laughs> it's not. It's not 220. It's um, it's not pretty. We've had some knockdown drag outs at that time. And today we're talking about 
empowered relating. And for quite a while, I felt at the mercy of this experience. Like um, something happens, maybe it's the lights, maybe it's the shopping, maybe it's presents that I didn't get or whatever. Or food but that you wanted to plan, didn't I, get planned. Yeah, yeah. Um, so something sets it off and now there's a fight. And there's me standing there thinking, okay, now we're in a fight. Darn. Uh, I wish we weren't. Well, that's not an empowered standpoint. And over the years, through working together, uh, Jolie and I, on, on how all this goes, and every time, like, okay, that just happened again. How do we keep it from happening? We talk over and over. And what it comes down to from from my point of view so there i am frustrated already now there's a fight what do i do and it's what do i do because for a long time i tried to figure out how to keep her from fighting with me yeah yeah rather than not fighting with her or knowing that she has these associations with the holidays, and it's not like it's a mystery. She told me over and over. I knew this, but eventually I figured out that, oh, there's something I can do about it. I'm not helpless. Yeah, and it's, but it's not something you have to point at me, actually. No, right? no, not at all. That's, um, that's actually the exciting part for me. Totally. I, it doesn't even really have anything to do with you. It has to do with how I plan my holiday activities. Um. And, and how I deal with the holidays myself, not how I try to manage how she feels or how I deal with a brewing fight in the moment, but how I want my time to go. And what do I do? So what do I do? Um, plan the lights earlier, order the things I need, Check it out and say, you know, so take those practical steps that avoid the frustration that could set you off. But in reality, but there's something's gonna be something. going to set me off. Something's because going to set you off. From my side of that picture, um, I needed to learn that this was that this was a pattern that I was re replaying over and over again. Because now I look, I look ahead to the holidays. And so here we are coming up on so a month, month and a half. Um, of stuff, um, stuff that's supposed to look a certain way and feel a certain way and make me feel like family. And, and all of that is going to lead me to crave in a really strange way, a fight. And so I'll be looking for one without meaning to, I will be trying in my brain to say, no, 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 don't look for those fights. But since I, um, since it's not it's, always my brain in charge yeah, there, it's way down deep. I do. Yeah. I start looking for those those fights without meaning to. Yeah. So I have to actually remind myself that that if that that's my not just my responsibility but also the gift I can give myself is to say look at look at the fight you're looking for. Look at the start the fight like right at the beginning when I'm starting to to poke and look for a reaction and take that take the breath. Take the breath, pause, remind myself that I am still recovering from a childhood filled with arguments around the holidays. And maybe I'll always be in recovery from that. Um, my parents didn't mean for that to be, but it just was. And then this year on, on top of it, I'm dealing with the grief of having just lost my father. Um, and it doesn't matter how rocky those early holidays are. You still want your family. Yeah. I'm still going to have feelings. You're going to have feelings. And there'll be a new way for me to accidentally trip into that same old pattern and so and it's so easy to feel like i have no way to change it and i can only imagine how disempowered it might feel from your side well that it it used to feel tremendously i i used to feel tremendously disempowered and what i think you you thread throughout your whole book is so key which is that I don't have to participate in that pattern of yours. Mm, yeah. I, I have, I completely am responsible for my 
part of our relationship. And so you want to fight? Um, well, maybe I don't. Yeah. In which case I experience your, your, uh, your little pokings and things. And, um, well, one thing I remember, it's not me you're fighting with. It's not yeah. me you're trying to fight with. Not really. And yeah. that's really important, uh, to me. It, it helps because I mean, if somebody wants to fight with me, it's going to change the way I feel. And my ability to be patient in that moment varies by what's going on. And if I'm frustrated already, then it might be a little harder to deal with. But the thing that has helped me the most is remembering that uh, it's not all about me. Yeah. I appreciate that so much when you do it. That that grace that you offer me, um, when you see that I'm picking at a thread or you know, I'm, I'm pulling at a thread that it's really a thread of my childhood. It's not... It's not real. It's not actually happening now. It's not active. Um, when you see that and you don't tell me to stop, like you don't put up a wall because that would be something no, really easy for me to push fight. against. Yeah. Instead, you actually soften and let me in. I, I mean, I, okay, that took years. So don't get me wrong. I know that that was work, a lot of work to it do. Was. But when you soften and let me in and not in a smothering way, but you invite me into some new, some different way of moving through the moment. And sometimes that's looked like, I remember one time when you suggested that we went for a run and I was so angry about it, but I like changed because I knew we were supposed to go for a run anyways. And I changed and I'm all grouchy, grouchy, grouchy. And I'm changing into my clothes and I'm wearing a Santa hat, but I must've looked like the Grinch because I've got a Santa hat on <laughs> and I'm going for a run. And we head out for the run and yeah, I ha halfway through a 5k and everything feels different because now my body is getting to release some of this stored up anger in a productive way. Um, that doesn't always work because sometimes these moments happen at a time when you can't just yeah, run out the door. Always, you can't literally uh, run away from it. Um, but we went on that run together mm -hmm. and I, I kept poking at you. I remember yes, it did. very clearly. Yeah, I remember that I too. Poke, poke, poke. Just little, little jabs, mm -hmm. little ways of, of trying to get you to engage with me in the way my father would engage with me. Totally. That's, that is hard to admit, but there it is. And your, um, your willingness to watch me lay those things down and to just not pick them up, just calmly w just walk right past them and continue being in the relationship that you want to have with me. Let me spend that. Oh, so what was that? Probably 15 or 20 minutes after we'd gotten dressed, we're halfway down the road to the turnaround point. And literally at the turnaround point, yeah. I remember feeling like, yeah. oh, I touched the bridge and we go to come back and oh, oh. Yeah. In fact, I do want not just to be married to you and to be with you, but to be celebrating with you. I want the life that we have now. And that means having to deal with the stuff that's on my side of the street, deal with the stuff that is mine and not, not act like it's yours and not poke at you looking for a fight. And these are, it's hard. It's not easy. It, it is not easy. And it is not easy when um, so here I am in a relationship with you and I, that relationship is very important to me. I prioritize that relationship in a lot of ways. And I'm thinking about the relationship a lot of the time. And then when you want to fight with me, um, I'm thinking that you want to fight with me because I'm thinking yeah. about our <laughs> relationship that you are relating to yeah. me, but we don't always relate directly to the people around us. Yeah. Sometimes you're just who's present. Yep. And I mean, I do that to you all the time in my own ways. Yeah. Um, and it takes significant patience and noticing skills, noticing, like big skills. noticing skills. It's hard to remember that it's not about you when you have been activated by somebody challenging you. So I get challenged by you or by anyone. It's not specific to you, but I get challenged. It is, uh, well, the biggest challenge to that is remembering that this might not be about me. Yeah. And most of the time it isn't. I mean, think about how many times do you 
uh, lash out at people only to discover that's not, that's not where my problem is. Yeah. We yeah. do that all the time. So if we can remember that we all do that and when it feels personal, well, verify whether it's personal. Is this actually about me? And you can't yeah. always just ask the question. You said that before. I can't just put up the wall. Hey, this isn't about me. Or even, hey, is this about me? Yeah. And sometimes it's a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. Sometimes oh, yeah. I really am frustrated. Yep. So that um, the last year that we argued about lights, um, which wasn't actually last year. Last year was a success story. Well, around you know the why? Lights. I didn't put up very many lights. It's true. You did put up a fantastic lit up unicorn. Yes. Which just changed everything. That was, you know, that, that get a fantastic light up unicorn. And that really does that, make things. That really lovely. brings the celebration. But the last time that we, we went through this and it was hard. I remember um, each of us having been very frustrated leading up to it. Mm -hmm. Not really not really fighting with each other, fighting with our, fighting our own stuff, but also not having plans enough time to yes. spend together in yep. a way that let us remember that, yes, we actually do want to live this relationship together. And um, uh, yeah, we, ha we hadn't planned in that time. So I think we'd spent maybe three or four weeks before just straight out scrambling, scrambling on, on all kinds of things, seven so. teenagers and, the kids all needing different things and holiday concerts and all the things. And then I think that was actually the year um, I was taking my, uh, my exams. Oh, yeah, so it was, was just right up to the and, end. And we did, we taught the kids to ask for what they want and then they grow up and they and do it. They do and it. we have to respond to that. And that's not <laughs> <Right>. easy. <laughs> so I remember it being yeah. actually a real, a real, um, a, a place where we hadn't planned well and we hadn't communicated well because we also just hadn't built in any fun yep. Yep. for ourselves beforehand. And that's really, it's hard. Every year things get busier and busier. And as we were thinking about starting this podcast, in fact, I was thinking like, really, we're going to do this at the holiday time. And the one reason I thought it was okay is that I know that when we have these conversations, so this is a little different because we're going to record it and then share it with the whole world. And that's totally fine. Yeah, it'll be fine. Sure, we're leaving um, that aside. We'll just, we'll just assume that this is all going to be fine. Um, but having these conversations reminds me that of how far we've come, but also that we figure the things out. Yeah. We figure out how to work with each other. And every holiday has been uh, an adventure. So to speak. Absolutely, it has. <laughs> and I know it is for, for everybody. It's, it's, it's a challenging time where there are so many expectations that we have for ourselves that we think other people have on us. And, and then whatever the rest of your life is too, doesn't stop just yeah. because it's a holiday time and we want it to, and that causes stress too. And now here we are trying to navigate all of that stuff, as well as whatever we brought into it. Right. So and, you're, you're your whole self. Yeah. I think this year is going to be a very interesting one um, because on the one hand, the pandemic gives us an excuse to set down some things that, that don't work with yeah. like ap unapologetically. So I'm trying to embrace that. There are some situations and some things I, I don't enjoy that I have done out of obligation. And a global pandemic is as good a time as any to say, you know what, I'm going to let go of that and see how yep. life goes without it. Yeah. So great. Awesome. I'm going to do that. But also it thwarts all of the expectations that I have about showing up for people in a specific way. So I think that empowered relating for me this year is going to be about uh, making new traditions and not just in the way that we have before where we would say like, oh, let's try a, a new rhythm for Christmas morning or let's try, um, you know, order, organizing gifts in a different way. But let's let's think about like big stuff. What's the absolute most important and maybe pick three things and that's it because this year has enough on its plate. Yes. We don't really need to ask, add any more expectation or obligation to it. No, we don't. But it feels hard even to say that right now. And a little sad, a little. Yeah, it's that the, the expectation and the, the tradition and whatever that tradition's value, tradition yeah. has for value for us. But we can, we can each work on our stuff still. Yeah. Well, we talked last time about uh, wanting more. Right. And. Now this is about 
empowered relating, those things are so tightly connected because when I come into, a, a, when I come into the holidays, it's like, okay, so what is it I want out of this? And boy, is that a useful discussion to have? Like just what is it I want? Brainstorm and let of this, go actually, of what you yeah. think you're supposed to want and have that discussion with the the people to, who are connected with you and and yeah, ask so, for it. So establishing, you know, we talk about this in consent education all the time. Over communicating is better than under communicating. Yeah. Uh, it's and it's worth making sure that we have a shared definition. And that's going to come up again. We're, I mean, we're talking through some interesting subjects throughout this season, but making sure that we have a shared definition. Mm -hmm. um, well, what does it mean to celebrate? So I can say right now that for me, celebrating this year is going to be about rest and rejuvenation. And not just for me, not just for you. We also have a couple of kids in college who have gone through, I mean, this is, Oh, yeah, this is incredibly hard. They're going through pandemic schooling and trying to still get great grades and they're pushing. And then we've got all these other kids. Um, we've homeschooled for years, but the kids who were in public school are now homeschooled again. Letting everybody use this time as a as a. Yeah, rejuvenating is the best word I can think of it. But that means we have to also share the work. Of the yeah. holiday yes um so yeah it sounds like we need a family meeting to talk about what we all want out of the, the holiday fresh because yeah. we we have yeah. a lot of systems in place for our holiday that make it run really smoothly there's a lot of things that the kids do. expect um and they actually work really really smoothly at this point but i think it's worth saying to everybody okay what's the one thing you need to make this feel really yep. good um, cause I know I actually need some rest, yeah. some real deep For rest. Sure. And so what's, what do you need? What's the one thing that comes to mind? Well, just as a side comment. So what I bring to the holidays has mostly been, well, let me just go in and see what happens this year. Mm. And that produces its own mm. frustration and discomfort for, me, I'm for a you who's a planner. <laughs> And so you started talking about that. And I thought, what do I want? Uh-oh. Same thing I want every year. I want you to make it awesome. Oh, wait. No, no, no. I can do this. I want to play. I want there to be games. I want there to be maybe some storytelling. I want that kind of thing. I so, love that. And so you want the, play and I want rest. Right. So one of the things I hear right off the bat is you play with the yes, kids. Yes, exactly. Well, I rest. That's right. <laughs> and, and I wanted to say something about that too. This thing about empowered. Yep. I am empowered to make this holiday whatever I want it to be. And then, you know, you're involved and in that. And, that. and then we co-create it and we, yeah. we create what you want. And bringing, you mentioned bringing the kids in. And yeah, because they're absolutely they're grown up enough. They are grown Our up enough. Our kids are 13 to 21. They can own their parts of the holiday. And there is, I'm, I find, interacting with our particular set of kids who are all teenagers now, is that they don't necessarily feel empowered so much as burdened. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. But the thing is, we're that's, clear with them that they have to yeah, participate. But I get being that a member of this family means participating, it means participating. And in I, the family. And I, I get that because that's kind of where I came from. I'm a youngest child, and I have thoughts about how that impacts me. But one of the things that I'm certain it informs in me is okay, everybody make this great for me. <laughs> oh, we dealt with that so much oh, at the beginning yeah, of our relationship. And the so, first like three or four years, I remember you, I would talk to the kids. I would talk to the kids as they were growing up, as they'd pass like the 10 or 11 year mark. I'd say, okay, you're, you're part of the magic making now. Yep. And, and then, then I had, had to, to have that conversation me. with you. <laughs> oh, yep. you're on this side of the line, buddy. Right. Because so, I'm an oldest child, and I am, in many ways, um, a matriarch yeah. of my family, yeah. uh, especially my my mother's family, the family I had growing up. I, be, I I moved into that role really early, and the idea of having that created for me it's so foreign. I was you know eight the last time I thought that, that was totally going to happen. So I've I've learned the difference between, or not the difference between. I've learned the value of um claiming that i want things yeah 
And then? And then taking responsibility for making them happen myself. And that makes me feel so good about being married to you. I mean, you know, well, I had a, a lot. We both had from the beginning, <laughs> and we had a lot of feelings about getting married. Not neither one of us is was totally sure whether being married was even for us ever again after our first marriages. And when I hear you say, like, right, I'm going to not only claim my desire, claim my want, state it, get clear about it, and then take responsibility for it, I feel yeah. like that's I get a full body. Hell yes, I'm here. Yeah. Like yes, let's uh, let's do this thing together because I can get behind that, and I can stand next to you and do more than just rest because you are. Because I can help energize you. Yeah, right. I feel Where, I feel jazzed yeah. about that. I'm like, yeah, I'm into that. So, so okay, I, have, I like that. I have play to do this year. You have play to do. Yeah, not work to do. I have things I want to make happen. Yeah, and that should be play. Awesome. So. I love that. Okay, so. Thanks everybody for being here. This was awesome. Thanks. I this loved is fun. it. Yeah. And yeah, we'll catch you on the next side. Mm -hmm. This is the Project Relationship Podcast with Dr. Jolie Hamilton and Ken Hamilton. In episode two, we shared what it feels like to own our own stuff around holiday stress. Ken shared how he learned to manage my holiday angries without taking it personally. And we discovered that we both feel better about the holidays when we set our intention ahead of time. This year, I'm going to focus on rest, and Ken will focus on play. Keeping those basic desires in mind will let us both take responsibility for asking for help and fully participating in getting what we want out of the holiday season. Join us next time for a discussion about boundary setting at holidays. That ought to be good. Until then, remember, relationships can be messy, and that's good news.